are Toulouse. One, two, Dupont. Hello and welcome to GDD Coaching and Analysis. French rugby continues to dazzle the rugby world. And 12 months on from the first solid evidence of their resurgence as a world superpower, they look more and more like serious World Cup contenders, with genuine world-class players throughout the team. And right at the heart of what makes France so good to watch is World Player of the Year, Antoine Dupont. In this video, I'm going to highlight some of the ways he's really making this French side tick, and I'll take a detailed look at this glorious try and attempt to answer the question, is this Dupont best try ever? And just as a little bonus, we'll also have a look at the two Iris tries, which demonstrate that their attack can still produce tries even against an outstanding French defence. Let's get into it. Dupont makes a difference to every team he plays in, and it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the French game literally revolves around him, both in attack and defence. Notice how he positions himself just outside of the Irish nine shape, so that he can read the play and then shoot onto the receiver, and he doesn't care how big they are. Here tackling Josh van der Fleer before bouncing to his feet and making a hit on Conan that epitomises just how strong and brave he is in the contact. But there's no doubt that it's in an attack that he really sparkles. One of his super strengths is his ability to fix players around the ruck area. Because he's such a threat, the Irish defence are all focused on him, and that alone completely takes away their ability to press hard, giving Cyril Bay gain line with a simple carry. So, what does he do when he doesn't have a short line runner, and no one seems all that keen on getting the ball? Well, he throws a magnifique pass to Damien Penon that literally could not be more perfect. He sees things others don't, and has the skills to make it a reality. So often, he looks to be just feeding the forwards and going with the flow. But don't be fooled. The moment the defence give him an inch, he takes the whole nine yards. And it's exactly this threat, coupled with that incredible French defence, that led to that decisive try, scored by Dupont's favourite crashman, Cyril Bay. Notice that the Irish defence scrambling after the turnover, are preoccupied with the threat of Dupont, so that when he takes that step across, both Gibson Park and Tideburn have to hold on to him. So even though referee Angus Gardner does his best, there was no stopping by from crossing the line. OK, let's have a look at that try. That could well be Dupont's finest yet. And to start that analysis, we go right back to the very start of the game where Romain Intermac kicks deep, leading to a ruck just inside the Irish 22. Notice that Dupont is holding on the blind side of the ruck, which is where most nines would position themselves if they think the opposition are going to box kick. And that's because his role is to escort Mac Hansen and provide protection for the catcher. But a poor kick from Jameson Gibson Park sees the ball hit the contact shields instead. Now, this might seem like a silly point, but those pads literally make this try possible. Instead of bouncing off at speed, the ball loses all momentum when it hits the pads, and then just like he planned, rolls straight into Dupont's hands. And Dupont wastes no time in making the most of the opportunity to attack a broken field defence, linking with Toulouse teammate and Tamak to stretch the Irish defence. It would be so easy to take this detail for granted, but just watch how hard Dupont works ahead to play to either pick up an inside pass or simply to move the ball as quickly as possible to stop Ireland from setting. Notice France play the same way off the 50 metre line, which is so important to force Ireland to have to reorganise off the floor before defending a French nine shape. And here's the key decision for Ireland. Do they hold on the blind side? Or do they fold to cover the fact that France have a 10 shape ready to go and backs loading on the edge? And this movement and the sheer number of options France have creates the opportunity to send Antonio crashing through the defence. And then we get to see both key elements of Dupont's game combining to create the try. And Intermac does pretty well too. Just watch Conan, Ryan and Kelleher here. Even though France have six of their seven backs in the 15 metre channel, all three Irish forwards are again focused on Dupont. 
as I'm sure they worked on all week. And a small step is enough to give Intermac a run at Mac Hansen's turn shoulders. And although Conan does well to get across, Intermac hardly even needs to think about the pass. As the moment the ball leaves Dupont's hands, he predicts exactly where he needs to be. And as ever, is in the perfect position to receive the pass. And sprint through for the try. Now, while you consider whether you think that was Dupont's best ever try, we've just got to have a look at this Mac Hansen try, which could not have been executed more perfectly. It's so cleverly done. France have a lifting pod set in field, and like most teams, have either a winger, a fullback, or, as in this case, both, positioned behind the pod just in case of a long kick. But knowing this, Hansen weaves his way between the two receipt zones and plucks Joey Carberry's millimetre perfect kick from the skies to put Ireland on the score sheet. And then, just to show the scrum halves really shouldn't be trusted around the ruck, Gibson Park scores this cracker, taking full advantage of Cameron Walkie Colin Paul Willems to move out, which creates the ideal nine-size shape hole for Gibson Park. So, what did you decide on the Dupont try? And what did you think of the video? I'd love to hear your feedback. So please do leave me a comment down below and don't forget to hit the like button to help the channel grow. Until next time.